Roses are red, violets are blue, Batman's parents are dead, what you gonna do? For 85 years now, Batman has entertained readers and viewers alike and has never ending fight against crime in Gotham City. His stories range from psychological to surfing off against the Joker. But when it comes to video games, Batman's track record is 50-50. Things were pretty good during the NES-SNES era, but his 3D adventures were marred by clunky mechanics, clunky graphics, clunky everything. That was until 2009, when an unknown British studio named Rocksteady surprised everyone with Batman Arkham Asylum. Arkham Asylum was unexpected. Not only was it the first great Batman video game in a long time, but it was a damn good game from a studio with only one other title to their credentials. Arkham Asylum's success sparked a video game renaissance for the Dark Knight. Today, the name Batman Arkham is more synonymous with the world's greatest shitpost. While Rocksteady went from making one of 2009's greatest to one of 2024's most middling games. Batman Arkham Asylum is a game I have a lot of history with. It was one of the first games I bought for my then new Xbox 360, and for me, my first real next-gen experience. Never had I ever experienced a game so rich and engaging like Arkham Asylum. Remember, I spent most of my childhood and early teenage years playing the PS1 and Destroy All Humans, so Arkham Asylum was mind-blowing and 12 years later, it still is. Batman thwarts his arch-rival the Joker and takes him to Arkham Asylum. What seems simple becomes complicated when Joker escapes. All his goons are let loose and soon they're in control of the Madhouse. Batman sets out to stop Joker, unaware of the Clown Prince's bigger plans. Batman, you picking this up? Oracle, I'm here. Arkham Asylum just vanished off the network. He's in control of the security system. He's probably isolated it from the grid. Arkham Asylum's premise sounds like a familiar Batman story. Bad guy gets captured, bad guy escapes, bad guy hatches a plan to take over Gotham, and Batman must stop him. What makes this simple story so grand is its strong writing and world building. The game's story was penned by Paul Dini, whom Batman fans will know as one of the minds behind Batman the Animated Series. That show excelled because of its mixture of animation and mature storytelling, and Arkham Asylum feels like an extension of what Dini did on the show. It's got a gothic art direction, a grounded yet exaggerated feel, and animated serious alums Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill, and Arlene Sorkin voicing their iconic characters. Yet you don't have to be well versed in Batman lore to enjoy the story. There are nods, lots of them, but the fan service isn't what drives the narrative, it's the writing and characters, both of which are great. Batman runs into some familiar faces during his mission like Harley Quinn and Killer Croc. They throw a wrench into Batman's plans when the story calls for it, and their inclusion felt natural, not forced. Joker is off screen for most of the game, but his presence is felt since he's always chiming in over the intercoms. Joker's messages are a constant reminder to Batman and the player of who they must stop. Plus, his banner is darkly hilarious. Are they ready? Have you planted the explosives yet? Good. Razor's just finishing his off now. Good. Let's test him out. No! No! Cut. <laughs> Joker may get all the laughs, but it's Scarecrow who gets all the scares. Scarecrow strikes when the player least expects it. His sequences are the game's highlights for two reasons. One is because of the hellish, deteriorating landscape Batman is dropped into, but the other is because Rocksteady uses these scenes to delve into Batman's psyche. He may be a vigilante, but behind the cowl is a human, one who witnessed his own parents' murder as a child. What really surprised me in replaying Arkham Asylum was the world building. Like I said, there's a ton of references to the greater lore of the Batman mythos, but the world itself has a lot of character. Arkham Asylum feels like a lived-in place. It's a centuries-old institution home to Gotham's criminally insane. Clean and sterile hallways give way to dank and decrepit holding cells. 
Arkham symbols you find delve into the history of the institution, as narrated by the ghost of its founder, Amadeus Arkham. Audio logs you find give an insight into the minds of the antagonists. Outside, you can see the Gotham City skyline, reminding the player of the world beyond Arkham. In short, Arkham Asylum's plot hits familiar beats and features familiar faces, but they're done in an engaging, face-punching manner. What else is Joker planning? How should I know? You think anything he says makes sense? I think he's insane. <laughs> oh my god! Get out of the way! <laughs> oh, isn't that cute? Little bats are sleeping. Someone finish him off. Batman Arkham Asylum mixes combat with stealth and linear mission design with open environments. Where other developers stumbled making Batman fun, Rocksteady comes along and says, Hold my battering. Good evening, Arkham Asylum! Tonight, we will all watch Batman die! Fighting in the previous Batman games was less about besting your opponents and more about how much you could button mash to win the fight. Arkham Asylum's free flow combat is simple but smooth. You have two buttons, one for attack, the other for countering. The more enemies you beat up, the higher your combo gets. Kicking goons and disabling them with a quick arm snap feels great. While it lacks the depth and variety found in the sequels, it's still a solid setup. You feel every punch and kick Batman dishes out and it's gratifying when you clear a room full of goons without taking a single hit. Special moves you unlock let Batman throw enemies or disable them by breaking their arm or snapping their leg. Arkham Asylum's brawling is not of the button mashing variety. In fact, button mashing will only get Batman's ass kicked. It's important to always be aware of your surroundings because you don't want to be overwhelmed. Enemies come in many flavors. There are your standard goons, plus special ones armed with knives or stun batons. On easy and normal, an indicator flashes when an enemy is about to strike. When they do, press Y to counter. On hard, this is turned off. Because I know this game's combat inside and out, I played it on hard. Enemies do extra damage, and because there's no flashing icon, it makes you more alert. I'd say hard is tough, but fair. It's easy to stay on top, but just as easy to mess up. As long as you play smart, the bad guys won't be a problem. These are my best guys, Bats! They'll find you and kill you! Besides combat, there's stealth, or as it's called here, predator encounters. You'll stick to the shadows and the gargoyles to take out armed thugs. Should you get spotted, be ready to make a quick escape. Gargoyles come in handy until they start booby trapping them. Then you'll want to use the vents and other cover. Halfway through the game, Joker begins outfitting his men with modified suicide collars that blare an alarm when you take someone out. As a teenager, I used to love the combat, but not the stealth. Now it's the polar opposite. There's something oddly joyful about watching thugs go from calm and collected to utterly terrified as you thin their numbers. Each Predator encounter is like a mini sandbox, providing the player various ways to non-lethally take out bad guys. Sure you could use the tried and true sneak up from behind, but it's much better, and more creative, to use Batman's gadgets or the environment. <laughs> the stealth rewards creativity and efficiency, Plus it plays up the notion of Batman being a terrifying figure when he's not the world's greatest ass kicker. So what's the plan? Isolate something in that room unique to both? Exactly. A Batman isn't complete without his gadgets. Batman starts the game with batarangs and detective vision. The former is self-explanatory, the latter highlights people and things and the environment. Detective vision is the game's most famous and infamous mechanic. It's famous because of how useful it is, and infamous for how widely copied it was. Now the concept is nothing new. Metroid Prime had a similar idea with its scanning system. However, Detective Vision is important because it's useful for finding things that otherwise be impossible to see. 
like DNA samples. During stealth, it can be used to monitor enemies. Detective vision isn't a gimmick, it's a useful tool. Batman acquires new gadgets during his adventure like explosive gel, a line launcher, and a cryptographic sequencer. Like Metroid, these items are used to access areas you couldn't access before, and some can be used during combat or predator encounters. Arkham Asylum structuring is very Metroid-esque. While you have objectives to complete, you're allowed to explore the island and all the buildings on it, though some areas are locked off until you have the right gadget. Yes, it is I, Edward Nigma, the Riddler, and more importantly, your intellectual superior. Experience is earned from completing objectives, combat stealth, and solving the Riddler's many puzzles. The infamous man in the green hat has placed an assortment of trophies and riddles all over Arkham Island, and it's up to Batman to find them. The more you solve, the more goodies you unlock like character figures and challenge maps. The Riddler puzzles became an important part of the Arkham series, even if Rocksteady went a bit overboard in the sequels. Arkham Asylum features 240 riddles, which is a lot, but it's not that tedious when you consider most are easy to find, with only some requiring backtracking. Plus, it's funny listening to the change in Riddler's tone as he goes from cocky to panicky as you solve more of his riddles. I'd have solved all the puzzles by now. I don't believe it. How did you work that one out? Once you've stopped the Joker, you can jump back into the game to solve the remaining riddles, or try out Challenge Mode. Challenge Mode consists of various combat and predator encounters that test your skills. The combat challenges are fairly straightforward. You fight through four increasingly tougher rounds of enemies and earn bonuses for not taking damage, using different attacks, etc. Predator challenges are much more interesting. The goal is to take out all the thugs as quickly as possible, but there are certain takedowns you must do during the encounter. Challenge Mode boils down Arkham's combat and stealth to its purest form, allowing the player to enjoy the mechanics in a standalone mode. You had to spoil everything, didn't you? Beating up Bane, feeding Scarecrow to Croc, slapping around Harley, my hobby by the way, and ruining all my lovely venom plants. It's over, Joker. Batman Arkham Asylum might be 15 years old, but its gameplay hasn't aged a day. Although it's a bit basic when compared to Arkham City and Arkham Knight, this is still a rock-solid system. I think the reason why boils down to the team at Rocksteady being devoted to creating the best Batman experience possible. The fact that I was able to jump into the gameplay no problem really speaks to how everything holds up, even if there are a couple of kings. The big one is the boss fights. 25% of them are great, 70% are okay, and 5% are red light, green light with a giant crocodile man. The 70% consist of Bane and the Titan mutants, which all use the same pattern of throw the batarang, dodge, then wail on them while they're stunned. It's not that these fights are bad, but they're repetitive with the capital R. Killer Croc's encounter is neat in concept. It's less about fighting and more about sneaking. You need to avoid making noise to alert Croc to your presence as you navigate his lair. Sounds cool, but in execution, it amounts to 15 minutes of crouch walking around and throwing a battering when he pops up. The Poison Ivy and Scarecrow fights are good. The former involves dodging her attacks and damaging her during her brief moments of vulnerability. Scarecrow's encounters play out as platformers from hell. You jump and climb through Batman's nightmare while avoiding Scarecrow's gaze. The boss fights are a mixed bag, but Rockstay would learn from their missteps in Arkham City. But that's a video for another time. Stop! Stop, Batman, please! You've got to help my babies! I'm really not interested in a bunch of flowers, Ivy. Visually, Arkham Asylum holds up. I played the original release on the Xbox 360, and barring some occasional pop-in and minor quirks, it looks great. I think what's helped the visuals hold up is the art style. 
It's a sleek, gothic look ripped straight from the comics. Like I said earlier, the Asylum feels like a character in of itself. From the institutions to the caves to the holding cells, there's something marvelous yet hideous about it. It may have been built to cure the criminally insane, but you'd think twice if you saw the conditions. There's a lot of neat details peppered into the graphics. For example, Batman's suit and cape show signs of wear and damage from the game's events, and Arkham Asylum itself undergoes some radical changes in appearance. The voice acting is top notch. It feels surreal playing this game knowing the likes of Kevin Conroy and Arlene Sorkin are no longer with us. For many, they are the definitive voices of Batman and Harley Quinn, and they are both fantastic here. Ditto for Mark Hamill as the Joker. If I see you trying to follow me, he dies. Harley's looking forward to it. Maybe I'll film it and post it on the internet. <laughs> Very rarely do all the pieces come together to make a great game. Sometimes they come close, other times they don't fit at all. Rocksteady may have been a small studio, but with Batman Arkham Asylum, they proved they could play with the big boys. Where a previous Batman game stumbled, this one runs with confidence. The combat packs a punch, the stealth is satisfyingly sneaky, and the game design meshes linearity with sandbox gameplay. As a licensed game, there's tons of love and respect for the source material. The basic setup is fleshed out with interesting characters and world building. By isolating the action to Arkham Island, it keeps the action self-contained and it doesn't get muddled by too many villains or things going on. Batman Arkham Asylum holds a lot of sentimental value for me. It's the game that showed me what the next gen was capable of, and as a gamer, it broadened my horizons by introducing me to genres I'd never experienced before, like stealth. Barring a handful of nitpicks and so-so boss fights, this is a damn good Batman game. With such a sturdy foundation, the only thing Rocksteady could do was build upon it, and build upon it they did. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Batman Arkham Asylum gets a 9 out of 10.